Well, hi everybody. Well, we've just come back from our canal fishing school with the first one of the season, and gee, we have a lot of fun down there. You know, it's been quite tough this year. We've got dirty water in the, in the canals, and it's just making it a bit more awkward than it was last year. Let me tell you about the canals. They're constantly changing, so it's a challenge for anybody to go down there. Challenge accepted. No. I love a challenge. I don't want to have it all the same all the time, so therefore I'm looking for what's going to be the answer. Well, it's been a bit tough, so we're changing what we do. When the going gets tough, I'm told that the tough get going, so I guess we've been toughening up. Now this group of guys and one lovely lady had a wonderful time down there learning new tricks. And it's funny, you know, on day one, most people go with very high expectations of catching a fish because they've seen all those videos. You know, it's a bit like watching test cricket in highlight form. You have half a, an hour of all the wickets and all the runs, but in actual fact, it just takes a bit longer to get to that. So we're all pretty hyped when we arrive and, you know, you don't realise just how much in the way of detail is required. And the thing that I love about teaching people in these schools is that we really do get and address the detail. So we spend a bit of time on casting and you'd be surprised how much of an improvement comes when we get things going in the right direction. And then we get down to the whole thing of making sure that we get all our drift control, staying in contact, getting all our efficiencies up so we're not wasting time running back to the car because we've lost something, we've got it all with us, we've got everything that we need, and we're learning how to change, change, change. So by the end of the three days, you can talk to anybody who's been on that course and they will now be really highly skilled. So watch out for them when they're on the canals because they're going to do really, really well. Well, it looks to me like the Tekapo Canal is probably fishing the best and that's because it's cleaner than the rest and of course with the North Island having some very cold weather over the last week, um, it kept the, the canal running all day because the flowing canal is an easy canal to work from. We did spend a little bit of time in Ohio A and a little bit of time in Ohio C but to my mind they're pretty darn murky so you need to have big gear when you're there. So if you're going to go down there and catch something, my advice is get hold of a big egg either a big glow bug or even up into the 10 mil eggs, which are starting to get quite uh, quite large because quite honestly the fish just don't see them. So we want to make sure that they catch an eye, we catch their eye and that you're uh, changing the sizes according to the conditions that you're in. Of course it's pretty darn cold down there, we had minus 7 for a start off at one day and uh, that means you get a bit of ice in the guides but because we're doing a lot of egg drifting uh, we don't have to be out really really early though often you do get that period of just at the beginning of the day where it starts to uh, fire and it's nice when we get those first bites it gives everyone a bit of encouragement and that's what we had uh, got salmon brown trout and uh, rainbow trout and some of you would have looked at some of our uh, posts on our facebook page will know that um, it was pretty successful all around Anyway, prospects for the future? Well, I think it's going to get better uh, if we can get our canals a bit cleaner because really visibility is a bit of an issue. So uh, Tekapo seems to still be the one that's got the most pressure on it because it's probably fishing the best. So if you can get a chance, get yourself down there and don't be afraid to get out. Try new methods. Really be careful in the way that you um, that you fish. I know that sometimes you look at the experts and they keep on catching fish and you think, oh gee, it must be quite easy down there. But there's a lot of attention paid to, to find details to get the very best out of it. So uh, make sure you've got good technique and you'll have a good time. I think that the other canals when they're clear will come uh, pretty good. And the great thing that I would say is because I've had uh, so few fish taken out of them, then probably the fish are getting quite a rest. So when it does come right, make sure you're down there and have a good time. All right, as it comes to other places which are open and what's happening at the moment, the rivers have been pretty high and uh, that's kept most of the major ones uh, with anglers out of them just simply again because you just can't get out there and fish them. The, the lakes have been going okay. I know that Lake Coleridge has been doing pretty well. Um, and the key with Lake Coleridge to me, I just love daytime fishing. I know last time we talked about nighttime fishing at, at, at Coleridge, daytime fishing in there is really, really good. And the thing that I like to do is put out soft baits around any river mouths. Now, wherever you've got the stream coming in, like say for the Harper end, you've got you know tongues of water coming in, then you've got places where um, there's food being brought into the system and the trout will hang around there. And often what happens is because it's quite deep and, and this water goes over the top, that we cast out and we just let those soft baits hang. So you don't want to get too 
heavy with your soft bait heads. I would normally work around about a twelfth of an ounce, maybe down to a sixteenth at times. Uh, it would be unusual for me to go as, as high as an eighth of an ounce, but you can cast a long way with that. It's nice to have the wind at your back. I don't like it when it's really, really calm. If it's calm and frosty and there's not much happening, beautiful to look at, but not quite so good for fishing. Whereas when you've got that little bit of a ripple on the surface, it's surprising how good that whole system can be. So you've got the harper end, you've got where the Wilberforce comes in, you've got the little stream mounds as well, and of course the Wrighton. The White Wrighton is a very shallow place, so when you go there, make sure that you're not dragging the bottom in fact when it goes to the right and sometimes I've used 24 and even 30 seconds of an ounce cast it out and just bring it back really really slowly when you fish soft baits in a lake it's surprising it's a bit like snapper fishing you have the fish suck onto the bait so you let them go you just wind it very very slowly remember it's not like a bit of metal which you have to race in in order to get it to make some some movement you grab hold of a soft bait and see how you can keep it steady. You can't. It's always wobbling. Challenge accepted. No. And when it's in the water, it's always wobbling. These trout, they'll, they'll seek that out because it looks alive and they'll go and they'll grab it. So do a bit of experimentation. You'll be surprised just how successful it is. I certainly enjoy my days up there. And if you can do it in the nice day, uh, in, in nice conditions, you don't have to go into the nighttime in order to catch fish. Those soft baits will work well. So get yourself into the likes of um, Coleridge. And of course, you've got like Sumner, you've got um, Lake Self and a whole pile of other lakes which are open at the moment in our local area. So get up there. And there's a lot of people who go to, to other areas. And uh, you know, if you really want to catch some fish, Here's a, here's a hot tip. Now, don't tell anybody because I'm I was sworn to secrecy on this, all right? Shh. Now I've got you all listening. That's good. Okay, you go to Lake Pukaki. <laughs> now, most people go to the canals when they go down there, but you know, Lake Pukaki is quite a murky sort of lake, but it's got a lot of nutrients coming in, particularly down through the uh, Tekapo system. And the river mouths this time of year, guess what all the fish are doing? They're lining up to go spawn, and some of them they try and get up and spawn, but they're too steep. But that doesn't stop them from going around those river mouths. Go take yourself a, a soft bait, or you can even take your fly rod, or anything out there. Cast in those river mouths, which are open. You're allowed to go up the rivers, but you're allowed to be at the river mouth, and go just dribble your gear out there, and you will have a fantastic time. There's really, really good fishing to be had. Oops, I said too much. I'm in trouble. Sorry to all you people who've told me that and said keep it a secret. You know that you can always keep a secret when you're involved in the fishing tackle industry. Anyway, if you want to come and talk to us, come and see us at 484 Cranford Street. We'd love to be able to help you or go online to any of our uh, social media or web pages. We'd love to help you. Give us a call. Hey, we'll encourage you. We'll get you out there. Remember, the hardy get out in winter and they get a lot of fish. Enjoy.